Hello, this is Victor from Vitagenics again, and today I want to speak to you about allergies, histamines, amines, and how we can deal with that or make life a little bit easier. So uh, maybe some of you are having some bad reactions to some food or drink or the seasons like, you know, like pollen, hay fever, etc. Or maybe you're reacting to chemicals like perfumes and other things. And uh, not just reacting, but uh, we might say overreacting. And uh, maybe you're not aware of it, or maybe some of you are aware or consider that you have a, what we call a histamine issue. And uh, this is when the body's immune system is uh, being triggered. And uh, maybe it's being triggered erroneously or it's overreacting to something. And so we want to look at uh, the reasons why this is happening. And as we talk about it, uh, you know, again, our key words are like the allergies, histamines, amines, and the immune response. So histamine is an amine. And there are many others, but histamine is usually the only one you hear about. And, and that is the one that is usually the culprit, but it's not the only one. So we'll talk about a little bit about why this happens, but really we want to focus on easy, quick ways to help you reduce or stop it. And I'll try to make this a short video and just, you know, try to give you some quick, easy information just to increase your awareness and hopefully give you some tools. So talking about the why uh, before we get to the how to stop and reduce it, uh, you might be on some drugs or medications that are, are interfering with things in your body. This is a big problem nowadays. So if you are on any kind of medications, talk to your doctor about that first. Do some research. Research uh, any drugs that you're on and you might see that there is indeed uh, side effects that are leading to your histamine issues. So that's the first thing you should look at. I, I really can't speak specifically towards that. Uh, the other thing is you may have an, an enzyme deficiency that you're not breaking down the histamines in your body. Uh, and um, now, of course, the histamine, the, not the histamine, the enzyme deficiency uh, could be for many reasons, maybe because of drugs or other issues. Uh, but again, this is one of the, the basic mechanisms that might be failing, so to say. And then another thing is you may simply be producing too many of these amines, too many histamines. And uh, this is, again, when the body is overreacting and over uh, the immune response is too strong. Or simply your gut is producing too many histamines all the time. And so these are some other things we'll take a quick look at. And then, uh, not finally, but one other thing is you may be taking in too many of these amines through food and unfortunately a lot of good foods are loaded with amines and again also connected to all of these things all five of these things can be interrelated you, you might have leaky gut or other you know gut biome issues you know dysbiosis your the bacteria in your gut might be out of whack so to say or imbalanced and and so you've got the kind of bacteria that are producing too many histamines so all of these things can be interrelated. You might have histamine issues because of any one of these or because of all of these. And so I've broken this down. It, it's really an oversimplification, but I just wanted to put this out there so you get some feeling for why this might be happening to you. And more importantly, I know you want to have some quick answers on how to stop or reduce it. And especially naturally. So I'm not going to be talking about any drugs or about any heavy-duty supplements. There are things you can do, you know, the enzymes you can take and such. I'm not going to list anything like that. I'm not going to talk about things like TH2 dominant. Uh, there's like, you know, people talk about genetic factors and you might have this because you're TH2 dominant uh, rather than TH1. The things I'm going to talk about here, uh, such as like sunshine, will actually with something like TH2 dominance, the sunshine happens to balance that out. So the things we talk about here are going to potentially eliminate your histamine issues for a variety of different reasons. So I'm going to give you just a whole bunch of different stuff to look at coming from many different angles. Sunshine is one really important. Uh, liver is another 
you should eat lots of liver anyway. And I put liver here not just because it's so important to have the food, but because also your liver is critical in with the histamine issue because your liver is taking the histamine out of the blood. And so if your liver is not function, functioning optimally, that could be the reason. So you want your liver, liver to be healthy. And following up with that, I have milk thistle on this list for that reason because milk thistle is fantastic for your liver. You can find this in kind of a supplement form. I mean, it's basically an herb. You know, you can get it in capsules, often combined with dandelion and some other things uh, to make it even more effective for your liver. So that's something to look at. Moving on, we have this Chinese tea, which is not very common, um, but uh, anecdotally, it's, uh, you know, a lot of people say it helps them with histamine issues. Again, the things on this list, you know, they're not all scientifically based. A lot of it is just from other people's experiences. Uh, but you will hear that a lot of people do have a good experience with it. Uh, speaking about teas though, tea is something you actually want to avoid, especially when it comes to like black tea, green tea. Uh, so be careful about tea. Uh, moving on, the next thing is MSM. And this is something that provides a sulfur sulfate for the body to use, making it bioavailable. And most people are able to access that and make good use of it. And MSM can have a really quick impact on people that have like hay fever and such, where you'll get like instant relief from the hay fever. So that's something you might want to check out. Uh, another thing similar to that mechanism is Epsom salt. Also provides a similar type of solution in a very different way, of course, taking Epsom salt baths or, or taking it in, in other ways. Um, along the same lines, eggs also provide... Uh, the sulfur plus everything else. So eggs are just eggs and liver. Get those two things into your diet. They're fantastic. They'll help you with your histamine issues along with everything else. Um, moving along, apples, uh, apples and cranberries too. Really good for combating histamines. And we're going to talk a little bit more about fruits on the next page. Uh, reishi mushrooms are said to be very helpful. So you might want to look into that if they're readily available to you or if you like to eat them. Um, vitamin C, generally speaking, uh, you want to get a lot of vitamin C. That's good. However, citrus fruits, which most people connect to vitamin C, citrus fruits are not good if you have histamine issues. So stay away from the citrus and try to get your vitamin C elsewhere. Uh, cucumbers are another one that's good. Broccoli, ginger, Garlic and onions, okay, you see we're getting like herbs and vegetables and stuff. Licorice, so this is a rather odd one. I'm not talking about the junk food, but if you have access to real licorice and you like it, that is another thing you might want to consider. Uh, celery, artichokes, these are good. Basil and rosemary, and there are other good spices too, parsley in particular. So there are a lot of different spices that are good, but also spices that are bad. Uh, you might want to back off of the cayenne pepper uh, and the chili. And so th this is not a complete list. So I wanted to put together a list that was quick and easy for you to look at so that you could try adjusting your diet a bit. And one of these things might be able to help you. And again, these things are attacking different mechanisms and you might be able to you might have to attack multiple mechanisms within the body that are malfunctioning or that are dysfunctional. And so the, the histamine issue can be resolved very simply sometimes or actually quite often, but it is very complicated. So moving on, we're going to talk a little bit about foods to eliminate because you often hear about food elimination diets. And of course, we should get all processed sugar out of the diet. This is just a terrible thing, along with vegetable oil. Uh, if you're watching this video, you you probably already know these things. So that's uh, I think there's no question there. Uh, something you might not be aware of, a lot of people do know wheat is bad, but a lot of people that are into health food are loading up on the quinoa. And this is not good for you if you have histamine issues. Uh, along with buckwheat uh, and amaranth, which are considered better grains, 
not if you have histamine issues. Other grains can be okay, again, if, you know, if they're soaked and sprouted, uh, like oats and such. But stay away from the wheat, quinoa, and uh, buckwheat and amaranth. Not good for you. Now we get into um, a more sensitive issue with fermented foods. Again, these are considered a big no-no for histamines because fermented foods are loaded with amines. But of course, these are very good for you. And, you know, we, I mentioned at the beginning, you might have this problem or you likely have this problem because you have gut issues. And if you want to fix your gut, you want fermented foods. So this is a tricky thing. You may need to eliminate or cut down on your fermented foods. Uh, but if you could improve your situation with things on the previous page that I mentioned, maybe you can keep the fermented foods in your diet. Uh, just be aware that fermented foods are a known issue. They contain a lot of amines, and so they're often uh, a no-no if you're trying to get rid of your histamine issue. Okay, moving on to the fruits. I mentioned the apples and cranberries. Stay away from strawberries. Strawberries are bad. Uh, probably the worst fruit if you've got histamine issues. And most other fruits are not that great, especially stay away from dried fruits or over-ripened fruits. Now, the good fruits, you know, apples, cranberries, mangoes, coconuts, figs, golden berries. Uh, there are a few other things like persimmon, passion fruit, some other exotic fruits that are fine, that are helpful for you. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Just, again, look at the list, see what's good, see what's not. Um, just to make things a little bit easier, in case you can't see there's a difference. I have a difference in color here, but above the line, bad, below the line is okay. Moving on to the vegetables. Again, the, the top here. Your veggies, basically all your veggies are okay if they're just fresh vegetables, except for these very popular ones, tomatoes, spinach, eggplant, bell peppers, and kale. And unfortunately, again, talking about fermented stuff, any fermented veggies or pickled stuff too, you should be avoiding them. Again, these these are generally speaking, they're superfoods, but they might be giving you the histamine issues. So just see, you know, if they're in your diet, remove them and see if you get better. And then you bring them back later after you recover, after your body normalizes. Okay, so again, things to be a little bit careful about. Uh, you want to, especially a lot of people I know are doing the avocado. Uh, I know for me, I love avocados, but check this. If you're, if you're eating a lot of avocados, see if that's giving you issues. And then another one that's really popular was the kale. So that's about it. I just wanted to give you these these two lists, kind of, you know, the things to try to include in the diet that can help you get rid of stuff and some things that maybe you should consider avoiding. Uh, it's a very complicated issue, but it often has some very simple solutions or at least some simple ways to help you manage. And so I hope this will help you manage your histamine issues. Uh, sorry if I spoke too fast. I wanted to make it quick and just get this out into your hands as quickly as possible. Once again, I hope this helps you on your road to wellness. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you subscribe.